My name's Tim Haynes. Um, I'm producer of the Walking with Dinosaur specials. I started with making programs about dinosaurs about five years ago with Walking with Dinosaurs, which was our first uh, program that used computer graphic dinosaurs and creatures. And we went on to make um, Walking with Beasts. And then we thought it was time for a change, and we started to make these programs, which have a presenter in them. And I made one of them, and Jasper made another one. I'm Jasper James. I made the special, which is about the biggest dinosaurs of all time. I'm also in the process of making a, a sort of mini-series about sea monsters, which is a journey through time, goes way, way, way back, and looks at um, really the worst times ever to get in the water. I think sometimes people have an idea that there were some dinosaurs, and Walking with Dinosaurs did tell you about an awful lot, about 35, 40, I think it was, and they kind of feel that's very complete. That's told them all they need to know about dinosaurs. But in fact, it's a little pinprick. There are thousands and thousands of interesting and fascinating extinct animals, and we've only really scratched the surface. And if you're interested in the sort of things that have, were spectacular, were huge, and used to live on this earth, then there's a lot more to tell you. I think when we were making Walking with Dinosaurs and Walking with Beasts, we did kind of wonder what would it be like to have a presenter in there. And one of the amazing things it does is it gives a really good sense of scale. And I think that's one of the biggest values in having actually a person running around with these dinosaurs is you just think, ah, they're that big, are they? Uh, so that's one of the really valuable things. Also, it's someone who's really interested in animals. Uh, Nigel is a zoologist. He loves reptiles. Uh, and you can just see his enthusiasm. And all of that is just binds the program together. He's, he's in danger as well, and people can identify with that. He can wrestle with them if they're small enough, and he runs away from them if they're b bigger. And it all adds to the things you can communicate to people and the sort of stories you can tell. Um, in Giant Claw, uh, the starting point was a huge claw, bigger than anyone I'd ever seen before. And that belonged to a creature that which we didn't feature in Walking with Dinosaurs or Walking with Beasts that lived and uh, impressed 75 million years ago. So we wanted to make a program about it. Land of Giants is based um, pretty much in Argentina 100 million years ago. It was a time when the dinosaurs were the biggest ever. You know, forget T-Rex. The predators then were bigger, and their prey were the biggest animals that have ever walked on Earth. So Nigel goes back to that time, and he wants to, to actually spectate the biggest hunt to have ever taken place, so the biggest hunt in the history of life. And so he spends his time trying to, first of all, find out where this massive herd of Argentinosaurus, they're the prey, where they're going to come through, and he wants to be there when they're intercepted by something called Giganotosaurus, and that's the biggest predator ever to walk on land. So in the course of the journey, um, he has to basically, he has to fly with pterosaur so he can get a good view of the landscape around him. He nearly gets eaten by a giant crocodile, but eventually he finds this giant herd of Argentinosaurus, and then he watches a hunt. And some of it's gonna surprise people. I think that it's a, um there's, paleontology is a living science and it's changing all the time and we want to reflect that. And one of the most exciting aspects which is shown in giant dinos is that the whole of the southern hemisphere is comparatively unexplored compared to North America and Europe by scientists. And they keep going out there and finding valleys full of eggs and gigantic bones and things like that. And they're great stories which we can now bring to the public and make real. Uh, Giant Claw is uh, basically a quest program because he's g trying to find out who owns this claw and the claw is about 28 inches long and he reasons that this must be quite the worst predator that's ever lived and so he goes hunting for the owner of this claw. To do that he has to go back to S Mongolia 75 million years ago and he starts off in the desert and we know that it lived just on the edge of the desert where there was desert and forest together and he picks up clues along the way but in order to do so he has to get past a lot of animals. He gets chased up a tree by a bunch of velociraptors which unlike in uh, Jurassic Park are not about 15 foot long, they're only about 6 foot long but they're nasty little predators. He then has to really hide when a Tarbosaurus turns up, which is the uh, Asian cousin of Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, and eventually he makes his way to a big watering hole where he decides to wait there and wait for the giant claw to turn up. Um, and when the giant claw does turn up, it's a much bigger surprise than he thought. But I can't possibly tell you that. <laughs> well, the first, 
the first shot we did with him, he has he has swum with sharks and he has lain down next to alligators and stuck his head in their mouth and never been injured in his life. But the first shoot we went on, which didn't have one animal in it because it was all our computer graphic animals and animatronics, he goes and rips his fingernail off in the first scene. And so presenting us, uh, us with a real continuity problem because we had shot a shot in the middle of the show and we'd shot a bit at the beginning and then he had to have a bandage around his finger. So we, we had this bandage that kept on coming on and off for wh wherever he was meant to be in the programme. But um, no, he uh, otherwise he's a rough, tough fellow, and he usually survives what we throw at him. I think he, in Nigel's case, it was one of the reasons we chose him. Um, getting anyone to do that, even a Hollywood actor, is extremely difficult because you have to feel emotion and focus on with your right eye line something that just simply isn't there. Um, and I think if we had chosen, I don't know, you and McGregor to do it or whatever, he would have struggled. Uh, but Nigel was really enthusiastic, he was really up for it, and also I think he, he pulled on his own experiences he'd had with tigers and sharks and everything to bring it alive. So when we go close in on his face, you kind of believe it. <laughs> you believe he's seeing these things. Crossing a nesting, a field of nesting dinosaurs was tricky with a red flag playing a matador because there are no animals at all. Uh, so he was waving this flag around. Um, and trying to be scared as if they were jumping up, trying to grab him. We had to take lots of different size shots for that one so we could cut around it. I don't know whether you had trouble in the water. There's always trouble in the water. <laughs> I mean, filming underwater when you've got to choreograph everything and really it's hard to communicate with people and, and, and say to Nigel, look, there's a, there's a sea monster over your right shoulder. All that becomes a lot harder underwater. Um, but it works. I mean, it, it, you just have to plan it really carefully. So before you get in the water, everything is planned out. So Nigel knows at what point he's going to look over his shoulder, see something come over from the other side, and then dive out the way. He actually gets very excited when we eventually pull an animatronic in, where he's got actually got something to grab. And um, he wrestled with one dinosaur in our show, and we couldn't stop him. He went on for hours wrestling with. And he was so desperate to get hold of something. Where have we been? We've uh, you went to Australia, Fraser Island. Uh, I've been to the Canaries, which was we went into the middle of several Canary Islands, and they're quite astounding. They're beautiful. You know, I'd never really seen what the inland Canaries looks like. I've always seen pictures round about the beach, which is very built up, but inland it's stunning scenery. Um, and also recently to Egypt, where we wanted to show an extremely barren place, which um, their desert is very good for. What's interesting about Egypt is that it's famous for its fantastic coral, its wonderfully coloured sea life. And we were going there because we wanted to show a time before half of this coral evolved and, and when colourful fish weren't really around. So we go to this beautiful diving location and find a little place where actually all the coral had died and all looked a bit old and, and we could control what kind of animals were around. But it's, it's wonderful water clarity and, and the scene looks very spooky, very nice. With Egypt, I will never forget the heat. It was just unbearable. We were there, we knew Egypt would be a little hot in July. Uh, then, when we start ringing our relatives back in England, they're saying, Egypt's got a massive heat wave at the moment. We realised why we felt quite so bad. You know, this was Egypt at a hot time, uh, having a heat wave. And it's like, you know, 45 degrees outside, and it's just, you can't move. So filming in those conditions was very nasty. I wouldn't want to do that again. In Fraser Island, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but a little boy was killed by a dingo. Um, also, a man was eaten by sharks just before we went there. And it, it was a paradise of a place, but it did have sharks, and it had box jellyfish, and it had blue-ringed octopus, and it had uh, death adders, and it had horseflies, and mosquitoes, and sandflies, and blackflies. But strangely enough, those, all, despite all the warning and everything, they don't, those didn't bother us too much. So we were lucky, I think, in that respect. In Sea Monsters, it's different in a sense because rather than just go back to one time, he's actually going to go back to seven times. We kind of call it the seven deadly seas. He's going to visit the worst seas there have ever been, the worst place that a human could possibly think about diving. So he starts with, I guess, the least dangerous of those seven, um, and that's in the Triassic some 250 million years ago. Um, and there he encounters quite a few reptiles at that time were in the sea, big, nasty reptiles. He then goes on 
backward in time um, to a time called the Ordovician. And that, as far back as we've ever done in any of our programs, is 450 million years ago. And things were very weird then. There are really large scorpions that live in the sea. Um, they're over a metre long. You've never seen scorpions like these. They've just got their great big pincers that are full of blades. Uh, these are the kind of things you really wouldn't want to dive amongst, but Nigel does because he's very brave. Um, also some big 10 metre long um, tentacled things, um, which are actually the top predators at the time. Um, moving on to um, the third place we actually visit is called the Devonian. Now the Devonian has some really big fish. Uh, these things have armour plated heads. Um, there's one called Dun Duncleosteus. And, um, and Nigel does an experiment to find out just how strong the jaws are on these things because they had massive jaws that could bite through anything. So Nigel builds himself a special cage, which is the only thing that will protect him in the water against this, and then actually does a little experiment to find out how strong a, the bite is of a Dunkleosteus. Uh, the next place we visit is called the Eocene. That's 36 million years ago. What happened then? Well, one of the animals we actually saw in Walking with Beasts, we're going to see Nigel actually dive with this animal. It's a Bacillosaurus, and it's the, the biggest, baddest whale that has ever lived. Um, these days, we're used to seeing whales eat plankton. They didn't bother with that. These, they had a much better set of teeth, and, and they could take on anything, really. Um, next up is a time called the Pliocene. Now, people think about great white sharks, and they think they're pretty terrifying. What some people don't know about is that a relative of the great white that lived uh, around one million years ago, and, and that was just absolutely massive compared to a great white, you know, way, way bigger. Um, and I think something times, something like uh, 30, no, let me think about this. It was something like 30 times the weight of, of a great white shark. So getting in the water of one of those was pretty scary uh, and what Nigel does in order to find out how these things hunt he attaches a camera to its back and, and then we actually see this shark's point of view as it goes off and, and finds its prey in um, the penultimate one the, the second most dangerous sea of all time is uh, the Jurassic and there we return to an old favourite called Lyplorodon who we first saw in Walking with Dinosaurs Lyplorodon is a a four-flippered predator, um, around 20 metres long, and I think when people see it, they'll realise why it's uh, why this was the dangerous sea because it is just huge. Uh, it's a huge reptile, and not a good place to go diving. The most dangerous sea of all, which we finish with, is actually the Cretaceous. Now, the Cretaceous is famous for things like T-Rex. So on land it was pretty dangerous, but in the water it was something else. Uh, and it's not just one big predator, basically the water was just alive with loads of big nasty reptiles and fish and whatever you like. It was there. Um, and so Nigel's time in the Cretaceous is, is one of the scariest times and he has to be very careful about what he does then. And he ends up having to go and find the giant Mosasaur, which is the worst predator in the Cretaceous. So in, in a bad sea, it was the baddest thing there. Uh, and we, uh, we finished the whole sort of sea monsters uh, journey with an encounter with, with the Mosasaur. Well, I, everything is new because we're tackling new subjects. So it's a bit like you've made a great natural history program about lions, and now you want to make one about whales. Uh, they're that different. So really, the effects we use in Walking With are just a means to bring people new documentaries. And the fact that we feel now, with the skills that we have, together with the people who do our graphics, we feel completely free to tackle any subject we like. And Sea Monsters is just full of a man in a cage being battered to death by <laughs> the most ghastly creature from, from, say, the Devonian seas. And we couldn't have done that five years ago, actually, when we started Walking with Dinosaurs. But now, as we increase in the confidence of what we're doing and the technology improves, we can do anything we like. I would hope that actually it attracted more people. I mean, Nigel is a charming presenter. He is, um, you can see he knows what he's talking about, but he has a, a kind of light um, charm about him. He's the sort of person you might like to have as a friend. And I think that seeing him wandering amongst the dinosaurs, you can imagine it doing it yourself. And I think that's quite important 
what what all this technology is doing is allowing the audience to imagine what it what, what it would be like rather than having to look at a book or look at a picture or learn something from somebody they can just sit there and take it all in and Nigel helps take you there